The Iowa Republican caucuses are now in the books, and now the Democratic Party is ramping up its campaign to hold on to the White House. And South Carolina's first in the nation Democratic primary is just weeks away, and Democrats are working to drum up momentum. Vice President Kamala Harris paid a visit to that state yesterday and spoke exclusively with ABC's chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. Take a look. While all eyes were on Iowa and the first Republican votes cast. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We hit the road with Vice President Kamala Harris, getting exclusive access as she campaigned in Democrats' first primary state. We're headed to South Carolina, getting an exclusive look inside the Biden-Harris campaign, just as the 2024 race steps into high gear. Back in 2020, it was South Carolina's Democratic voters who revived Joe Biden's campaign, catapulting him toward the nomination. Three years later, the Biden-Harris campaign, hoping that enthusiasm is still here. We traveled with her down to South Carolina. We were there as she was snapping photos and shaking hands and getting ready to take the stage on Martin Luther King Jr. Day in a speech on the steps of the State House outlining what's at stake in this election. Freedom is under profound threat. Today, in fact, we are witnessing a full on attack on hard fought, hard won freedoms. Then she was off to thank supporters at Big T's BBQ. It really is a wonderful day. Harris has been taking on an expanded role on the campaign trail, leading on issues like abortion rights and voting rights, and taking swipes at their Republican rivals. Passing laws to deny women the ability to make decisions about their own body. One does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government should not be telling her what to do with her body. After a surprise stop at the University of South Carolina to greet their undefeated women's basketball team, oh, we got a chance to ask the vice president about their campaign strategy. Do you think Donald Trump at this point is a foregone conclusion? I don't know, but look, if it is Donald Trump, we've beat him before and we'll beat him again. Uh, when you, again, look at all of the issues that are at stake, including our standing in the world, I think that the people of America um, want more in terms of um, the outcome of this election and, and, and charting the, the course for the future of our country. You've been confident. Your campaign has been confident. Some are concerned you all may be a little too confident. And why not go out and attack no. Donald Trump? Go after his legal challenges. What are you guys waiting for? Well, let me just tell you something. I am of the school that you either run without an opponent or you run scared. <laughs> I have learned that to be a fact, and that is the way that I feel about any election. So absolutely not. You can't take anything for granted. And we have a duty, a responsibility to earn this reelect, and that's why I'm out here in South Carolina. The second time. It's a state where the black vote is critical, but even some Democrats, like close Biden ally Congressman Jim Clyburn, say they're concerned about the campaign standing with black voters. How concerned are you that this key constituency may sit this one out? You got to earn the votes, and the votes are going to be earned based on one in a reelect. Have you actually? responded to the needs of the community. We have done the work that has been about bringing down unemployment, black unemployment, to some of the lowest numbers we've ever seen. What we've done on student loan debt, we have now erased student loan debt for over three and a half million people and with more to do. So we've delivered, but the responsibility but the getting across? Well, that's why I'm out here. We have a responsibility to communicate. We've done really good work. Our challenge will be to let people know who brought it to them. And Chief White House Correspondent Mary Bruce joining us live now. And Mary, we know you spoke to Kamala Harris. We also saw that decisive victory for former President Trump in Iowa last night. So how does this have bearing on the strategy for the Biden-Harris re-election campaign? Well, this certainly cements Trump as the front runner, and that means they are gearing up for what could be a very long general election for Biden. Look, Trump has always been at the center of his reelection campaign. He is running to stop Trump from getting a second term. And we have seen over and over again that central argument of this reelection campaign that Trump poses an urgent danger, they argue, to American democracy. And they say the future of this country is really what is at stake here. Now, what will be interesting to see going forward after Iowa is as Trump emerges now as the clear front runner, does Biden, do Kamala Harris, do they start taking him on more directly, right? So far, Biden especially has been very careful in how he takes on Trump. We'll have to see, you know, does that change now?
All right, ABC's Chief White House Correspondent, Mary Bruce. Mary, good to see you, and thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.